Hi everyone, it's Ken here. In this episode of Making the T-800 Endoskeleton, we're going to be making the wrist plate, which is the part that connects the forearm to the fingers. But before we get started, I want to apologize for the long delay since the last video. You see, moving my home and all my machines and building a new workshop took a lot longer than I expected. But the workshop is pretty much finished, and at least I have the mill working, so we can get back to work. In previous videos, I made the many, many parts that make up the fingers on the hand, and I also made up the parts that make up the forearm. In this video, we're going to connect these together. At the base of the fingers is a part called the carpal plate, which is essentially the wrist. It looks something like this. And that actually sits on top of the forearm parts, like this. And these pistons will allow the wrist you know, to pivot in various directions. If we take a closer look, this is what the part looks like. It has lots of holes uh, which are used to mount the, the fingers and all of the pistons that make the fingers bend. And then these countersunk holes here are what connect it to the forearm. Now in the original plans that I'm working from, uh, keep in mind that that was a static model and I'm converting it to a animatronic model. So I had to make extensive changes to the way the fingers were connected and such. So the original plans weren't very helpful and I had to actually design this part myself to accommodate all of the changes that I made to the way the fingers are mounted so that they could be animated. So let's head down to the workshop and make this part. The stock I had on hand wasn't thick enough to do a proper facing on it, so I simply sanded it to get the final finish look. The first step is to spot the bazillion holes that are needed in this part. Next I'm going to drill the holes that are later going to be countersunk to connect to the forearm pistons. And now I switch drill bits and drill the remainder of the holes. Most of these are to guide the cables down through the arm and into the servos. Now I'm going to countersink those holes to connect to the forearm. The feeds and speeds might be off a bit. You hear the squeaking here. But I am getting a nice finish. Now I'm going to bore the five holes that are going to hold the swivel joints that support the pistons for the fingers. And now I have to drill and ream a precise hole for holding the thumb in place. Yeah. 
And that's it for this step of the operation. In order to cut the profile around the part, I need to lift it up off the vise. So what I did was I created a simple fixture from aluminum with just a couple of tapped holes in it. And I'm using the countersunk holes from the part to hold it to the fixture. The first step is to use my 3 quarter inch shear hog to remove the bulk of the material. And now I switch to a smaller quarter inch end mill to reach into the places where the three quarter inch tool couldn't reach. And then I make a finish pass around the part. Then the last step is to switch to a chamfer bit and put a nice chamfer all around the contour of the part. When the fingers are mounted to the wrist plate, they sit at an angle back about 8 degrees and over to the side about 5 degrees. So it's a compound angle. The other two fingers are also tilted back 8 degrees, but they're 5 degrees to the opposite way. Now this vise gives me 3 degrees of freedom so I can position it any way I want. And right now I've got it tilted back 8 degrees and off to the right, 5 degrees. I pre-spotted the holes when I was on the mill, so now it's just a matter of lining the drill bit up with those spots and drilling. You can see me lining it up again here, and as soon as the bit stops deflecting, it's lined up. Now that I've got all the holes drilled, 
I've got the vise still tilted in that same direction, and now I'm going to hand tap those holes. All I have to do is keep the tap vertical, just the same way as the drill entered. It's a little tricky when you first enter the hole because it's at an angle. But once it gets started, it's easy to see that I'm perfectly vertical, and now it's just a matter of tapping it. I'm going to back it out, clean it out, and then take one more pass. And now I'll repeat that for each of the holes. But here I want to show you what's happening. I'm going to screw in that finger support. And you can see that it is, although it looks vertical here, you know, with the plate at an angle, it is actually tilted eight degrees back and five degrees to the side. Now I'm going to flip the vise five degrees in the other direction and then drill the holes for the other two fingers. If you like this video and would like to be notified when I release new videos in this series or in other projects, all you need to do is click subscribe. If you're interested in my other projects, you can find them at my website at www.zeman.com or you can scan my channel here at Kentoons. I'll be back.